Hi, Karthik here from Design School by WP Algorithm. In this video, we'll talk about the login widget in Elementor. This video is a part of playlist called Elementor Basics in which we talk about every widget, every feature and all things Elementor. So if you're new to Elementor, check out Elementor playlist. Let's see how the login widget works. So in the WordPress dashboard, let's add a new page called login page that will have the login widget. Well, the sole purpose of login widget is to help users log in in a design friendly way. So let's create a page called login page so that the users can use this page to log in. Of course, this page will be made with Elementor. So I'll just call it login page. I'll publish it. I'll click on edit with Elementor. We'll just add the login widget to the page and that's more than enough. So my page is created and the design is either inherited from the theme which is hello theme in my case or any other theme that you use and if you have this ugly title i've shown how to hide this by using a single uh, page or post template i'll just choose this hide title for now and since this is our login page we don't want header and footer over there right we just want the users to just log in on that page we don't want the users to do anything else so i'll just click on the settings cog and i'll change the page layout from default to elementor canvas so that will disable header and footer on that particular page and all you have is elementor content so i'll just click on update i'll click on the widgets button i'll type login so this is my login widget by elementor i'll just drag it in it has some horrible styling now there's a section and within that we have a column within which we have the login widget itself right that's how elementor works but the login form is all stretched out and we don't like this kind of look we can obviously change it and there are some options let's look into the options first so within the content tab you can either show or hide the labels which are these you can also change the input size which is the height of the form field so this box button again you can change the button to something like that you can also change the button size it will just increase the height and width simultaneously i'll just settle with small you can also change the alignment i think left alignment looks good also under additional options you can redirect him after login so we'll redirect him to our home page which is well the website itself you can also redirect him after logout so if he accesses this page and tries to log out from that page you can also redirect him again we'll redirect him to the same page or the home page so either way, even if his logs in or logs out from this login page, we'll be redirecting him to the same page or you can redirect him to a different page. Again, you can do all the custom link stuff. You can also show this lost your password stuff. You can also show remember me. So that will save the username and password in that particular browser. You can also show him a logged in message. So it will tell him that you're logged in. You can also choose custom label. So to customize these, you can say username just like that. Or let's settle with the default one, which is username or email address. We don't want custom labels here. Let's go to style. You can also adjust the row gap. It will squeeze the forms a bit links color again so that's the link color let's change it to something else label you can also change the label color to whatever you want based on your color scheme just pick the label color so that it matches the style of your website the same thing with field same thing with button i think the button looks good that way i think it's pretty much okay right now and you can also change the typography and text color of the logged in message under advanced you have all the standard options that you have for any widget so i'll just click on update now what can we do to uh, make this login widget centered and how can we make this boxes not stretch to the whole width well we'll just use the padding of the column and section let's start with the section i'll just add a padding of 50 pixels now that's kind of centered not exactly centered now i'll go to the column itself i'll go to advanced under padding for this column i'll select percentage i'll unlink the values i don't want padding on top and bottom i just want the form to be moved onto the center so i just want padding on the left and the right side of the column and the column is indicated by this dotted border that you can see here and sections and uh, widgets are highlighted by the blue outlines so if i click on the section you can see the blue outline and if i click on the column you can see the dotted outline anyway so i'll add a 30 percent right padding and a 30 percent left padding so that will perfectly center or align the form or login widget onto the center i think that would look great on tablet and mobile you can also change these values based on devices so you can either click here to change the view or you can click this one to change the view and when you change the view and change the values you are basically entering new values for mobile so whichever field has this particular icon whenever you change values you can change them per device so for mobile i think we don't need any padding i think that would look good for mobile and for tablet tablet i think 
the default one looks great on tablet as well and for desktop i think everything else looks good so i'll just update this let's preview our login page and it shows me i'm already logged in obviously because that's how i created this page in the first place using Elementor. Now, what values does the login widget take, right? What exactly are these username and password? Since I'm unable to uh, view the preview in my Chrome browser, I'll open up Safari and I'll show you the login page. Also, before doing that, I just want to change the layout of this. So I'll just click on this. I'll click on exit to dashboard. I just want to change the URL of this. So the permalink of this page, I'll just change it to login. So if I type WP freedom forward slash login, it will just take me to this page. I updated the slug or permalink. Now I'll open up Safari. I'll type the website and then say login, not login page. And that will take me to the login page. And this is how my login form or the login page looks like. We just designed it using Elementor. And this is how it will look in different views. The tablet view, the desktop view, and the mobile view. You can change values based on your needs. But I think this would this looks better. You can also squeeze this even further, but I think this much is enough. You can simply log in by typing the credentials and the credentials that it takes are the ones from WordPress. So if I enter my credentials, I'll log in as an admin. And here's what you need to know about the login credentials of WordPress. I'll simply log out from this browser again. Since I've logged out, from the dashboard but not the login page it's not redirected but watch what happens when i'm logged in or logged out from that particular page i'll enter admin and admin those are my uh, sample i it just redirected me to the home page i'll go to the same logout page again or sorry the login page again you can change the url of the page by clicking on here and changing the permalink to anything here the slug is basically the last part of the page so if i log out from here again i'm redirected to the logout or the home page those are the options that we've selected in the widget right so again i can click on edit with elementor now speaking of the users well in wordpress dashboard if you're an admin if you're logged in as an admin you can see something called users and there are different kinds of users defined in wordpress by default and few plugins let you even use custom users but what exactly is that i'll just click on add new i'll add a new user admin is also a user of wordpress editor is also a user of wordpress author is also a user of wordpress so that's what a user means and these are called roles in wordpress a subscriber can only view the content a contributor can submit his content but not edit it or delete it an author can edit his content delete his own content but he can only view others content such as post pages, even custom post types, and even Elementor templates. An editor can edit his own content. He can edit or delete other author contents, other contributors contents, and even subscribers contents and his own content. An admin can even create these users. They can, he can even reset the passwords of these users. And that's why admin is really important. And only create one or two admins and share it with those that you trust the most because an admin can basically screw up your whole website because he has the highest privileges. He can reset passwords, he can reset uh, the users, he can delete them, he can change the permissions. And I've installed a plugin called BackWP Up and it has created few custom roles. There are plugins that create custom roles and they'll have special permissions and privileges. Anyway, I'll just create an author and an editor. First, let's create an author. So I'll just call him author123 and email, I'll call him author2, I'll just enter a dummy email, I'll click on show password and I'm actually creating his user or I'm creating this author2 here, I'll type the password to be 123, you should always use a strong password, I'm confirming the use of weak password, again I'm creating a, an author here, I'll just click on add new user, again that in my admin panel as you can see here, so he, here it is. I can also edit him or delete him since I'm logged in as an admin. I've created an, a subscriber. I'll just delete him. I have the permission to do it since I'm an admin, like I told you. Let's create another user. So this time I'll create an editor. So I'll say editor1. Again, some dummy email over there. Again, I'll give the same password from the use of... I'll change the role from author to editor. I'll click on add new users in the login page. So author1 is the username of the author and the password is password123 I've created. I've created an editor and we'll go to, we'll open up another browser, Safari. We'll go to the login page. Now I'll type the credentials of author, it's author2, password123. And if I go to the dashboard, 
the role of him is an author he can only view posts but he cannot delete or edit them as you can see i can only edit or clone them but i cannot delete them because the role of him is basically he is an author he can only create his own posts and delete or edit his own posts he cannot view sorry he cannot edit or delete other posts that permission is given to the editor now let's log in as an editor editor 1 again the password is password 123 it's the same the wordpress login or uh, the login page login it's the same they're using the same credentials whatever credentials you give in the users again i cannot see the users here because i don't have the privileges because i'm just an editor i can only view or delete or edit others posts or my own posts so i can trash this or author one's post i can trash so i can trash all the posts but i cannot remove users or i cannot change their passwords because i don't have that privilege i cannot even view or change elementor settings because it's hidden as you can see here i can only create or edit elementor templates but i cannot change elementor settings such as custom fonts and icons again that privilege is given to admin i can only change my own profile picture or other information and that's how the login widget works now let's go to our login widget or the login page that we created which is login since i'm logged in it will already show me that i'm logged in as someone i'll just log out it will redirect me to the home page let's open up login page again and that's how the users and the wordpress credentials work with this elementor login page hopefully you understood so you basically create an editor an author a contributor based on how you want to set the permission so editor can view edit or delete his own posts and others posts an author can only view his own posts or delete his posts contributor can just submit his post i don't think he can even uh, delete his post that privilege is with the author or the editor admin can basically do everything that an editor can do and he can also create or delete users and he can do the main level stuff such as website maintenance he can access the top level settings and so on and that's how the login widget works with the wordpress user credentials that's it that's a quick overview of elementor login widget hopefully it made it clear to you if it did make sure to give it a thumbs up i'll talk to you in the next video stay tuned for more content subscribe if you didn't already see you